Hello, welcome to this video on Green's Theorem. My name is Nakaya Rimmer and I'm helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. We're into vector calculus. We're looking at line integrals, trying to figure out an easier way to calculate them. And so far we've looked at just what a line integral is, how you normally calculate it. And then we also, in the last series of videos, we looked at the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And so the next topic then is going to be Green's Theorem. If your curve is closed, there might be an easier way to calculate the line integral. And so, uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, there's a notation that you can add to the line integral to indicate that it's closed, putting a circle on the actual integration symbol. Uh, when you have a closed curve, there's an orientation that, that we have to um, discuss. And so, if your curve is oriented in a way that when you walk around the curve, what we have is considered counterclockwise or anticlockwise. This here is considered positively oriented. And so that's considered negatively oriented. And you could you can indicate that by putting a an arrow on your circle as well. And if you have something that's negatively oriented, that's fine. Just, just know that it's the, all you have to do is put a negative and you can then flip the orientation. All right. What does Green's theorem say? All right. Now let's discuss the actual statement of Green's theorem. Um, Green's theorem in this version is built for two dimensions. There is a three dimensional version, but it's given a different name. It's given the divergence theorem. And so Green's theorem in two dimension, we have to say some things about the curve first before we can start. Uh, if your curve is piecewise smooth, smooth in pieces, a finite number of pieces. If your curve is simple, doesn't cross over itself. If your curve is closed, and if your curve is positively oriented, then it will bound a region, and we call that region R. Now, the vector field has these components P and Q. Uh, those components, we need for them to have partial derivatives that are continuous inside the region. Um, the x partial on q and the y partial on p, in addition to the functions themselves, need to be continuous on the inside region r. If there's some place where there's a hole, we have to figure out how to deal with that. But if it's if it's a place where it um, Yeah, so P, Q, the Y partial of P, and the X partial of Q all need to be continuous on the interior region R. If that's the case, then uh, what we have will be a curve positively oriented. The region inside is called R, and the calculation is asking to, to work on the line integral, P, D, X, Q, D, Y, or F dot dr. And what Green's theorem comes in to say is that you can trade that in. You can calculate that line integral instead by calculating a double integral. The double integral is over the interior region and the, in, the integrand, the inside of the double integral, is the difference between Qx and Py. In this order, Qx minus Py. Okay, so you're trading in a line integral for a double integral. It actually goes both ways, but the majority of the time, I'm just, I'm just throwing a number out here. It's not precise or anything, but the majority of the time, you, the major majority of the time, you're transforming, you're trading the line integral for the double integral, but it's very possible to do, go the other way as well. I'll show you an example of why uh, going the other way would be beneficial to you. All right. So we understand about the curves and the being closed and the orientation. We have the statement of Green's theorem. Let's see our first example. In example one, we have the following e to the x squared dx and 2 arctan x dy. And the region that we're interested in is a triangle with these particular vertices. The origin, 1 on the y-axis, and the point 1, uh, negative 1, 1. And we're going to traverse that in a positive manner. So we have a closed curve. It's piecewise smooth. It's simple. It's positively oriented. The region inside is colored in here. That's the region R. And we want to look at the possibility of 
trading this in for a double integral over that region. So we look inside and we check for qx and py. And so uh, the p function is the e to the x squared. The q function is the twice the arctan of x. The x partial on q is 2 over 1 plus x squared. And the y partial on p is 0. There are no y, y's in that function. So um, it's not independent of half. qx minus py is not 0. And so then the, the difference between them, qx minus py, is what goes inside of the double integral. So we're trading our line integral for the double integral over this triangular region. Now we have to make a decision. You got to go back and remember all we did for double integrals. We have three different options. We can do a dy dx, we can do a dx dy, or we could go into polar. Nothing about this screams that it should be done in polar. So we have to decide our ordering. Do we want to do this dy dx or dx dy? Now you have to remember all that it, that, that involves. Now the region is not dictating to you either one. There's nothing wrong with doing the region in either order. Uh, if we walk a little bit down the path of trying to look at integrating 2 over 1 plus x squared, if we integrate with respect to x first, what we'll have is the arctan of x, which we later would have to integrate again. And that's not a readily available antiderivative for you. So my recommendation is to treat this function, who's all in terms of x, as a constant, integrate with respect to y first, and then you'll um, have something that's manageable to later integrate with respect to x. And so my advice is to do dy dx. Um, in doing dy dx, you make a slice who's vertical, and you put these circles on the ends. These circles dictate to you what your inside bounds are, your upper bound and your lower bound on the inside. And then this, this uh, slice moving from left to right, the leftmost is the outside lower bound, and the rightmost is the inside lower, uh, outside upper bound. So uh, the line that is in green there, the lower bound inside, that's the line y equals negative x. The upper bound then is y equals 1. And then you move this from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0. So if you're ever concerned about bounds, if, if bounds really give you trouble, my advice, you don't have to take it, but my advice is to draw in a slice, put circles in, and see where those circles fall at. What curves they fall on dictate to you your bounds on the inside, and then where that slice moves dictates to you your bounds on the outside. If you struggle with bounds, it's about getting the visual, looking inside the shape, and trying to decipher whether it should be dy dx or dx dy and putting the circles on the end of the slice very critical i feel all right so here we go then we integrate with respect to y this this has no y in it at all so the, the antiderivative of this is this guy times y now there's a step skipped here but there's a one and then there's a minus a minus x so so after integrating with respect to y and replacing the y with the one and the y with the negative x and subtracting you end up with 1 plus x. Uh, that 1 plus x then gets multiplied by your 2 over 1 plus x squared. So the 1 times that, and then the x times that. Now we just have a calc 1 integral. The first integral is an arctan. The second integral is a natural log. You let u be the denominator. The numerator is the derivative of that. So we have twice the arctan of x as the antiderivative of the first term, and the natural log of the denominator as the antiderivative of the second term. We put a 0 in, we put a negative 1 in, putting in 0 gives us 0. Put a negative 1 in, we have to figure out what the arctan of negative 1 is. Um, squaring the negative 1 and adding it to 1, we end up with a natural log of 2. Um, arctan of negative 1, what angle do you plug into tangent and have it spit out a negative 1? Angles must be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 for arctan. So we go with minus pi over 4. Now be careful, there's a negative from integration. The upper limit was all zero. It's the lower limit that's given us this. So there's a minus in between. But if you're careful, you'll be fine. Apply the two in and you end up with pi over two minus the natural log of two. All right, that's our first example. In, in subsequent videos, we'll have many more examples. And, um, and so let's go ahead and end this video for now. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. And uh, if, you need any, if you need any help, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Comment down below, like and subscribe and uh, find, your, find your way to my webpage if you want extra resources of um, problems, um, solved problems, uh, notes, and hopefully they'll be useful to you as you make your way through this, 
this multivariable calculus journey. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.